Hello, welcome back to the man cave. Uh, today, we're going to change things up just a touch from what I've been doing with the um, 30 days lost in space challenge that I've got like six days into it and just, you know, kind of lost interest a little bit. But we're going to get, but one of the things that I had been working on that I wanted to get done was uh, radio control for my Nissan. <laughs> As you've seen a couple other videos, I've got a little Nissan Sentra that I use. And I drive it back and forth to work. Well, I'll put an aftermarket radio in it, and it has a steering wheel control. Uh, and they, they sent, you know, a, a neat little device that wrapped around the steering wheel itself and, and put the control and stuff on it. But the problem I was having was I'd go to turn the steering wheel, you know, you're palming that thing around, and you'd hit it and knock it off. It'd fall on the floor, all that kind of good stuff. So I wanted to make something to fit on it. Well, the challenge was is I'm kind of new to Fusion 360. And I was trying to make a really complicated part. Uh, complicated part was the, um, wasn't flat. You know, a lot of stuff I've done on there has been flat or round or, you know, it's pretty simplistic when it comes to design. This had so many contours and shapes to it. I was like, what am I going to do? So what I did was, I did what we all do. And I went on YouTube and I watched some of the other, uh, uh, creators videos um, and found some really good helpful information and in this video I'm going to try to show you a little bit of that like I said it'll be rough ugly dirty but not dirty but rough and ugly but I'm going to try to show you how I accomplished it which was probably the long way around everywhere I did went but anyway uh, here's what we did so the the factory steering wheel has you know cruise control over here um i ended up putting the radio controller over here uh this is the brand radio i have um i really like it i mean the radio works really good uh the bluetooth all that stuff syncs up really well it works with android auto but uh what ended up happening was on the steering wheel there is an access cover that where you access to remove the uh airbag well, what I wanted was to make this radio control mount fit where that access cover was. And boy, howdy. I tried to do it from a picture and then tried to do different planes and all that. And, and that none of that stuff worked. So what I ended up doing was I bought a, a Creality Ferret 3D scanner. So I made a scan of a portion of... I made a scan of a portion of the steering wheel on this side and over here and was able to get my contours and all. And if I would have been really smart about it, I would have just pulled that cover out, set it up and scanned just that cover, but I didn't do it. But I wanted to get a scan and, and I'll show you, you know, in some uh, screenshots of the Fusion 360 stuff, but I wanted to be able to, you know, design this thing, kind of fit it up on the steering wheel, see how it's going to look and everything in Fusion. And... So, yeah, let's take a look at how I did that. But probably first, I'm going to show you a little bit of stuff with the scan. I didn't record me doing the scan because, obviously, I use my phone to do the scan. And I used the phone to do a lot of the recording. So, that weren't going to work. But I did use, um, uh, like I said, I used a ferret scanner. So, I've got the... I've got the actual scan, and, and I'll show you kind of what I did on that. So let's look at that, uh, and then we will go to importing it into Fusion and how I was able to get these crazy side contours and all this other stuff here, uh, and and you know how, how I was able to make all that work. So, yep, hang on. Let me switch over to that, and we'll move on from there. Okay, now on to the software and the scanning and all that good junk. Um, so let me go ahead and pull that up here for you real quick. All right, um, this is just the way it was scanned. Uh, I did it in a color mapping off of my phone, and then I downloaded it straight into Mesh Mixer. I didn't try to do any type of editing or whatever on my phone. I'm not that familiar with it. This is the first scan I did. Uh, I will say that I did end up having to put... Um, like uh, a powder on it because it did not want to scan the black very well. Uh, black, it does not, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't scan as well. Uh, but I did do this in a color scan, so it 
this I mean it looks like photo quality uh, you can pull in other images that are just the 3d scans that don't have all the color stuff but I wanted to get the detail on this line and the reason why I wanted that was I actually cleaned up all these jagged edges I deleted everything that I didn't need which was you know a bunch of the stuff and and uh, you can see some other you know other parts of the, other, the rest of the steering wheel that it picked up while it was doing it um, I got rid of all that I mean because I didn't need all that stuff and and that's just more mesh more data that it pulls into Fusion 360 that makes it a heavier burden on the software and on the computer and everything to try to calculate um, so I eliminated all that stuff that I did not need now and what I did do was I came in and cut this piece here out now if I would have been smart and nobody's accused me of being that I would have just taken this sucker right here and scanned it. Um, now, I did want the steering wheel, obviously. I did want the steering wheel, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. But um, this is, you know, I would have I would have got all these little tabs, and it would have made life so much simpler. Uh, and trying to clean up and, and get all these edges nice and true, it would have done a whole lot easier. Um, it just took me a lot of time uh, cleaning up these edges, and then when I, I bring it into um, Fusion 360 to, to get all the lines and stuff right the way I wanted them, it would have been a whole lot easier, because then I could have just projected the lines and been done with it. You live and you learn. But anyway, this is the way the scan came out. <clears throat> like I said, this is directly out of the phone, so. Uh, we're going to close out of this, and then I'll show you what it looks like in Fusion. All right, so we got it up here. Now, this is the first thing that I did. I brought this in, um, and the reason why is because this is basically what I wanted to model. I needed to get these shapes and contours, and you can see here the contours and everything that are in this. Now, if you if you guys want me to go into detail on, on how I did all this, I'd be more than happy to, but you know it's going to take longer than I think you want to sit here and listen. Uh, so I'm just going to give you the quick, quick version of it. So I brought this in, and this was going to be my tool. So I took this, and um, then I started building my model off of that. So this, is, so we go to the here, uh, and I've got some here. Up. Let me go through all this stuff real quick, and let me get out of some of these sketches that are open. Let me close some of this stuff out so it's not looking over right now. Okay. So we'll go back through the timeline. And this this is one of the things that I really like about uh, Fusion 360 uh, is you can go through these timelines and I don't know why my circle is still showing up. Uh, sketches. Let's just turn sketches off. Okay. For this, this minute anyway. So we import the part in, uh, and, and, and this is like I showed you there just a second ago. Um, and then once I import it in, I get it orientated because when you import it in, it's, it's not going to be put on your origin. If you look at your origin, I wanted to make sure I have my origin set and then everything revolves around that origin and it just makes it easier for me. Uh, it's just my, the way my mind works. It needs to be simple. So the next thing I did, I, I did a, an offset plane. Um, and with the offset plane, that allowed me to, um, come on, there we go. The offset plane allowed me to set this thing off of all the bins, um, as you can see here. Um, so this is basically the plane that I was drawing on, but I was using this as my guide. And that made it so I could get all these lines here right. But then whenever I got the the actual sketch done, and that would be the next step when I get the actual sketch done. Uh, sketches. Like I said, I'm still kind of new to this stuff. So uh, when I get the actual sketch done, um, then I can extrude it, and that's and that's you know I get the sketch done. I make some adjustments. I do another sketch, uh, and then I extrude it. And then once it's extruded, you end up with something like so. <clears throat> and if you notice, I extruded it 
uh, past my plane, you know, a, a little bit on this side, more on that side. And this is roughly the depth that I wanted the whole switch to be, and that's, that's why I chose that to work with. But as you can see, you can still see my, my body that is in here. <laughs> and the reason why is I use that for the cutting tool to get that contour. Uh, it took me a little while to figure that out, I'll be honest with you. Like I said, I'm not experienced in it, but it, it, it took me a little while to say, hey, I can use that piece for a tool and let's do this. Because I don't know how many different variations I went through before I was actually able to come up with this thing. So, but that's that's what we do. We're here to learn. And um, so then this is how I learned it the hard way. So I use this for my cutting tool. Uh, so then I split the bodies and then once the bodies were split, I removed the lower body and that's how I ended up with this contour here. And then from there, I went through the painful procedures of getting all my little tabs, the little tabs that were on the bottom, these suckers. Yeah, if I would've just scanned it, I would've had something to model off of and it would've been a lot easier. So I got all that done and then we come back up. I get my height, my wedge here. Uh, that sets the angle and the height for where I want my radio control at and then you know voila I do the last cut and that's good and then I just come in and put you know fillets and contours and shape it the way I want it and and that's what I end up with now the nice thing about this is once I once I did all this I was actually able to take the actual steering wheel scan and this is this is another scan that I did a little bit later on <coughs> to get a a little bit better look at the way it was going to look on it and I can see if my angles right because I did have to go back and make a few adjustments on angles to get it there but um, I was able to see it's going to fit just below the airbag which is what I wanted um, I wanted it so it kind of set plane with about the middle of the steering wheel which it does and the other thing is, is I was able to look at it back here on the back side now, of course, I didn't have it positioned exactly, but I could see that, hey, this thing should snap in. You know, it's kind of like what I was looking for. Um, and, you know, if I would have taken a little more time, I could have played with it and got it a little bit more laid around. But this whole steering wheel thing here wasn't really done to, to exact scale either. But this gave me a good idea of what I could be looking at. Because, I mean, you can see how far away here it was and then where it kind of went through there and that just means I just didn't have that part of the steering wheel in, in correct, correct relation to the actual steering wheel. Anyway, so that's that's how I did it. Um, once I got everything done, uh, I sent it over to Bamboo Labs and let's, let me open that up for you and I'll show you what it looked like in there. Okay, so uh, got it brought into the um, Bamboo Labs, uh, Bamboo Studio. Uh, this is the slicer that the uh, Bamboo Labs Carbon X1 Carbon uh, works with. I find that the factory settings and stuff on this have worked really well for me. Uh, I know there's some tweaking that you can do in them. Uh, I have done a couple of you know draft settings in here that, that I've done for myself. Um, but I actually ended up printing this one in a uh, two millimeter standard with supports. Um, it's giving me some errors because I don't have the uh, I don't have the printer actually turned on right now. But uh, anyway, usually I'll go in and I'll adjust my um, support. I do my wall loops at three, and I'll make some changes on my supports. I found that the, the auto tree with like a 35 degree overhang works really well um support material uh, you can see where it, it's showing the difference here because i printed it all out of asa uh but right now it's only let me select the the primary one so uh, i'd have to go turn the printer on and all that and i'm not doing that right now anyway this is what i did um so if we Let's see, if I go back here, let's just do this. Let's, let's slice it this way. And uh, I say, okay, let's slice it. And what that's gonna do is show you how the supports and all that stuff come in. Um, and on the Bamboo Labs, it'll take one hour and 17 minutes to print this. On my old Creality, this would have been about a four or five hour print. Um, 
but you can see here I didn't make any changes on strength or anything along those lines um, I could have but I've had really really good luck with the ASA material uh, it's it's really strong um, and it stands up to the you know to the weather to the heat and all and um, I've been really pleased with it so <clears throat> I, I, sometimes I'll go in and I'll make a few modifications on uh, infill uh, but for this I mean it's been great so anyway I hope this encourages you to try to do some things that you don't do or haven't done or don't you know have been have been thinking about doing uh, uh, it's been a fun project for me it's been you know it's been a while in the making for this one little piece but you know what it works great I've been using it for the last few weeks in the car and I mean I love it so uh, and it's not anything that you could buy off the shelf and you know it works perfect uh, so anyway give us a thumbs up like and subscribe you know share our videos uh, we got a couple other things coming down the line here shortly so I'm gonna try to get this edited and put out for you here soon and um, you know keep checking back um, I appreciate the few people that have subscribed so far uh, that you know to keep coming back and, and checking out my videos uh, I always say I'm gonna try to get you know a little bit faster on posting stuff and it just seems like life gets in the way but um you know I'm here to try uh, I enjoy it I do enjoy it it's just you know it, it does become time-consuming but anyway thank you thank you for the comments thank you for the people that's you know that's watched the videos and and uh, like I said I hope I've been able to help somebody out uh, if you got any questions feel free to ask if you'd like me to go uh, in detail a little bit more about what I did in Fusion 360 I can and trust me it'll be from a, a newbie's view um so i know that you know there's probably a bunch of people out here that struggle with the same things that i've been struggling with and and if you're not in something like that every single day using it you forget and then you come back and you're like wow how do i do that again and uh I mean, just keep plugging away and uh, you'll make it work y'all have a great one thanks for watching